Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to talk, let's summarize the Russian missile strike that took place during the previous 24 hours. We have the map of explosions, as you can see, some explosions took place in Kharkiv, Poltava, Dnipro, Odessa, and of course in Stara Konstantinov, the town that's located in the western part of Ukraine. Most of the explosions that took place in the east and the southern part were the results of work of Ukraine air defense, and uh, the most of the targets, most of the mis Russian missiles and drones were heading towards Stara Konstantinov. For example, in front of your screen you can see the roads of Russian attack and as you can see based on the map, most likely the Russians didn't attack Ukraine today using ballistic missiles, just drones, grand drones and cruise missiles. We still haven't received any updates about the results of Russian attack in the area, but most likely the Russians managed to deal significant damage. And I'll remind you that uh, this is the air field in Stara Konstantinov that Ukrainians most likely are planning to use for F-16 purposes. Now let's move further. We got a lot of very interesting updates, not just about the Russian missile strike. One of the most important things is that Canada approved Ukraine's use of Western weapons against Russia. Previously, there were calls to strike through Russia with weapons supplied to Ukraine in one of the uh, way or another. And we have a list of countries: United Kingdom, Latvia, Lithuania, Netherlands, Poland, Finland, France, Czech Republic, Sweden, and Estonia. And now we see that Canada joined this club of countries who decide to attack the territory of. Russian Federation. Furthermore, we have another important update from Denmark, uh, and according to information we have, Denmark will allow Ukraine to use its F-16s to strike military targets in Russia, Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. From this perspective, from the just the first point of view, first view, we can say that there is nothing special. Yes, most of the countries are already allowed to attack the territory of military objects on the territory of Russian Federation. So what is uh, so unique in this, uh, let's say, permission from Denmark? The thing is that F-16s it's not just the aircraft that is able to attack Russian stormtroopers, Russian vehicles, or to attack military objects. F-16s is a type of aircraft who can carry nuclear weapon, nuclear missiles. So basically, if we will change the statement based on the new you know, updates I just told you, Denmark will allow Ukraine to use its F-16 to make nuclear strikes on in Russia. So of course, if Ukraine had a nuclear weapon, then they had permission from Denmark to use this nuclear weapon on the territory of Russian Federation using F-16s. Furthermore, we have additional update from France. Obviously, uh, France will send and will send their forces very soon. Most likely, the French forces is already on the territory of Ukraine. Uh, this is not going to be a very big army. This is going to be at the first stage just a limited um, force, a limited group of forces, probably a few thousand soldiers, not more. But if we summarize updates about the countries who have already joined the club of, let's say, uh, countries who allowed to attack the territory of Russian Federation, if every single country sent let's say two three thousand soldiers this is going to be up to 10 brigades so basically one military core one military core of foreign volunteers and foreign soldiers and officers and the most important update about the current situation is coming from the united states of america because according to information we have according to financial times the u.s united states is close to offering ukraine a security pact the agreement would be the most significant in a series of deals Deals Kiev has struck with NATO countries. So we see from the Western countries, from these all these updates, that Ukraine is gathering allies around uh, Ukraine, Western countries uh, are gathering and they're creating a real fist, real offensive fist that they're going to planning to use to attack not just Russia on the territory of special military operation, but also to attack Russia, let's call it in old Russia. So, of course, very loud updates, very loud media victories from the Western countries. But the question is what the Russia, uh, what Russia and Putin himself personally are going to do with all these things. And telling the truth today, I analyzed the movements of Putin, movements of what he is doing and Russia as well. And we I've made a chain of events, chain of things that happened during the previous few weeks that, uh, to tell the truth, explains a lot. First of all, I'll remind you that the previous week, uh, Putin and uh, the had 
of Ministry of Defense and the F and head of, um, let's say, Foreign Affairs Minister of Foreign Affairs Lavrov visited Minsk and they had conversation with Alexander Lukashenko. And you know that both these two countries, either Russia and Belarus, are the part of the organization of Treaty Security, uh, Treaty Security Organization, right? And uh, according to Collective Security Treaty Organization, they are members of this organization. And most likely Putin arrived in Minsk with one question uh, to the president of Belarus, whether he will join Russia if Russia asks for help. And most likely that was the strict question to the president of Belarus. And most likely Bela, the president of Belarus confirmed this, his readiness because there is agreement and everybody should follow the contract. Later we got reports that Vladimir Putin visited Uzbekistan, the country that located in the south of Russia to the south of Kazakhstan. Uzbekistan is not a part of this organization. So the question is, what was the purpose of visit of this country? And there was a very loud visit with lots of press. And this is the place where Putin uh, stated that the current president of Ukraine is not Zelensky anymore, but Stefan Chuk, the head of Ukraine parliament. So that was a very loud event. And people, let's say in Russia, tried to focus the world's attention exactly to this situation. The question, what was the purpose? And, uh, and analyze the situation and I'll remind you that currently there is a negotiation process between Russia and the government of Afghanistan and according to these negotiations the Russians are about to recognize the current Afghanistan uh, let's say power uh, let's say authorities as the legal authorities so the question is what is the purpose from the Russian side to recognize Afghanistan as as like normal civil let's say state uh, without any problems with different you, you know I'm talking trying to talk about I will not let's use these words uh, let's say in out. And the answer is very simple. As I understand, the Russians are about to start the recruitment process of people, of, of soldiers from Afghanistan, and then they will send these people to the special military operation or even further to Europe. Who knows? But most likely, Uzbekistan is the country between, let's say, Russia and between Afghanistan. So that's why they need to fix the issues. They need to fix the roads. They need to sign the contracts and everything should be clear and everything should be described on the paper. So basically, Uzbekistan wants to get its share and uh, people of Afghanistan, the soldiers also want to get some share. They want to be recognized as well. Furthermore, we got uh, most likely Putin reached an agreement with the authorities of Afghanistan and Uzbekistan. And most likely soon this country will be recognized by Russia, not as a terrorist state. And today we got another report that the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation visited Kazakhstan. He had a conversation with the Kazakhstan authorities and also the same question, because after Uzbekistan, the is a Kazakhstan on the road between Afghanistan to let's say the zone of special military operation so that's why they wanted to handle the questions with them as well so most likely this is the response from the Russian side to the Western countries to the special military operation they're planning to give opportunity to the soldiers of Afghanistan to fight on the territory of special military operation of course for money with the Western countries and with Ukraine so this is like a part of answer maybe the minister of uh, uh, in let's say, uh, in defense of in the Russia, in the Kazakhstan Minister of Defense, also we're talking about the participation of another member of this organization, Collective Treaty Organization, uh, in the territory of special military operation. We can't know for sure because this information obviously was uh, classified and we will understand this only if uh, this request will come from the territory of Russian Federation from Putin. Now let's move to the situation on the ground. The Ukrainians during the previous night continue attempts to attack the territory of, of Crimea with attacking missiles. On this video, for example, we can see how the Ukrainians were launching six missiles on the territory of Crimea. And according to the Russians, later they stated that they managed to bring down every single one. Furthermore, that wasn't just like attacks from attackers. That was also attack on the in the Black Sea using the, um, let's say, Navy drones. Uh, and uh, the Russians managed to discover a part of navy drones somewhere in the black scene as a result of fpv drone strikes some of them were destroyed but some of uh, ukrainian navy drones managed to get, get the russian town by the name of chernomorsk and as a result of attack the ukrainians managed to destroy a uh, few let's say ship few russian ships few russian boats even it's not even the ships it's maybe a yacht that uh, the local rich people were using to celebrate some parties maybe something like this anyway we see that uh, the western countries are getting more and more involved in the 
the special military operation and the Russians are seeking the way how to involve also as many as possible allies in on their side. So this is a very complicated situation for now. When talking about these involvements of different allies of Ukraine and Russia, we see that the situation currently develops in Ukrainian favor. But the Russians are trying to find a way how to reduce this superiority, this distance, this gap, or, or maybe even to over overcome it. Now let's move to the situation on the ground and first we're going to talk about Kharkiv area. We have significant number of updates. According to information we have, uh, the Russians are about to start, uh, are about to open another front line in Zolochev, but the Russians are not in a hurry. They are not risking because the Ukrainians managed to concentrate forces. Now the Russians are trying to reduce the Ukrainian forces as much as possible. Maybe after that they will launch an offensive, but for now they are just limiting themselves with artillery duels, counter artillery duels, with strikes and many many other things because for now they understand that they are not ready the russians are limited and they are not ready to start a full-scale operation in zolochev kazacha lopin and udi and the ukrainians understand this well when talking about um, lipsy itself today we got a statement that uh, ukrainians was also dragged to the southern outskirts of the settlement lipsy has a large number of foreign legions and national battalion ba battalions mercenaries volunteers from france poland and germany were spotted in the village by the name of Slobozhanska, so this is the village. For now, with no geolocations to confirm this piece of piece of news, but uh, this is update that we should discuss that received from the very reliable Russian source. When talking about Volchansk, the front line is completely static. The only update we got uh, is some progress, probably, or how would you call this uh, the situation in the southern part of the northern Volchansk. If you remember a few days ago, some reliable mappers have already adjusted their maps, showing that this territory is already under complete Russian control, and we were expecting for some geolocations to confirm this piece of news and today we got some but so we can't use this update as the video that we can use for coloring the territory today the ukrainian sources published the video of uh, the uh, let's say storm the forces of the storm brigade loot that we met for for the first time during the battle for klishevka they were a part of a group that was storming that village on this video we can see how the ukrainians were counter-attacking the russians in the southern part of the north of Avchansk. first the ukrainians were bombing the russian territory and after that we see the ukrainian infantry attacking and clearing the buildings so based on that video we can make a conclusion that most likely the Russians managed to enter the southern part of north of Avchansk, but later the Ukrainians made attempts to counterattack the Russian forces. For now, we are not going to change the color of the territory because we still uh, don't have enough of evidence and not of geolocations to confirm a Russian, either the Russian or uh, neither the Russians nor the Ukraine control. Furthermore, the Russians continue pummeling and bombing the Ukraine positions in the central and the southern of Avchansk. The battle continues. So, as you can see, the battle continues and we can't tell for sure when exactly the battle is going to be finished until we receive the reports about control of industrial zone we can't even make any projections uh, and many any estimations on possible russian progress on the other hand we continue receiving a significant number of updates how the Russians continue hunting the Ukrainian armored vehicles, air defense systems, radars, many, many other, let's say, types of vehicles. The Russians have complete superiority in long range and middle range and low range artillery duels. The Ukrainians suffer significant losses. And I'll remind you just one important thing that since the beginning of the Kharkiv offensive operation, we haven't received even a single video confirming that Ukrainians managed to destroy at least one Russian artillery system somewhere between Belgorod and the borderlands even a single art maybe the ukrainians managed to destroy maybe but we don't know this and we don't and we haven't seen this now let's move further to the north in Kupin's direction where the russians continue offensive operation as you can see we have a lot of geolocations the russians activated during this area they're hunting the ukrainian forces armored vehicles tanks uh, after the russians succeed in the vicinity of kislovka kotlerovka and ivanovka now they are focused their pressure on the town by the name of stepovo novoselka the ukrainians try to redeploy forces but the main problem is always on this direction used to be and continue uh, be as the distances the distances between Askol river and basically the river by the name of Jiribet. 
The main Ukraine positions are located along Sinkovka, Petropavlovka, Kurlykovka, um, Glushevka, uh, Kalyshevka, and the Ukrainians need to bypass significant distances if they want to redeploy forces, let's say, from Petropavlovka to Kislovka, Kotlerovka. And around 12 kilometers for tanks that are moving very slow during the very poor quality of the roads, it can take hours while one, from, one Ukrainians from one side can get another side. So it's a perfect situation for the Russians to destroy everything on the roads. So this is the main problems and I don't think that the Ukrainians are able to hold the territory for a very long time. But on the other hand, we understand that when the Russians capture every single building, every single, let's say, village on this side, then it's going to be the same problem for the Russians. They also won't be able to move through the fields because they would be destroyed under the open air with Ukraine FPV drones. So the only possible solution for the Ukrainians uh, use, uh, you, uh, was, is and will be to move along a Skol River from Sinkovka to Kutmin. So this is the only possible solution. Uh, for the Russians because through the fields is going to be very difficult. Uh, we continue receiving updates about Stilmakhovka. The Russians also continue hunting, destroying the Ukrainian forces, but yet without any geolocations. But we have very important geolocations from the Ukrainian side in the vicinity of Svatova. And the Ukrainian forces published a batch of series of videos of how they were hunting, destroying and attacking the Russian armored vehicles, BMP-1, BMP-2, just regular trucks with infantry reinforcement reserves. So the Ukrainians established, as you can see, complete fire control, FPV drone control over this territory and they were hunting the Russian reinforcements and reserves who were heading from Svatova, probably probably in direction of Mesozharevka and Stilmakhovka. So as you can see, the main concentration of fire took place exactly in this area and most likely the Russians were using this road for sending forces to the north in direction of Zmiyevka, then to Kalimichiha and from Kalimichiha to Mesozharivka. So this is the only, let's say, geolocated uh, evidence from the Ukrainian side that confirms that probably the Russians were conducting something on this direction, but those attacks were under complete Ukraine control and during those attempts the Russians most likely suffered loss. We can't tell whether they are significant or not, but losses they suffered. Furthermore, we got a report that the Ukrainians have redeployed their command centers from the towns by the name of uh, Barova from this area this was yeah, but um, the Ukrainians are saying that they just redeployed forces, command centers from Barova and Liman towards the town by the name of Izum. But as I understand that wasn't like a redeployment that was like like combining so the Ukrainians, if you remember in the beginning of the year, the Russians have uh, combined the Kupinsk and Liman directions into one direction, Kupinsk, and most likely the Ukrainians did the same. They basically combined uh, the uh, Barova direction with, let's say, central northern Kupinsk direction with the southern Kupinsk direction, Liman, into one direction. And now from the Ukrainian side, it's like Izum direction. So this is like a global Ukrainian direction, concentration of forces, one command center, one, or oh, let's say, it's very easy now for them to operate to coordinate the movements and the let's say orders and uh, another situation from the Ukrainian side. Now let's move to Siversk area. After the Russians captured Bilogorovka, we start receiving any updates. Uh, the Russians continue bombing and pummeling the Ukrainian positions on the highest point on this direction, but without any changes on the ground. Just the regular military activities without any progress, uh, let's say, on the ground. The same situation in Sporna. The village is under very heavy Russian fire with FPV drones. The Russian probably reduced the village already till ruins hundreds hundreds maybe thousands of soldiers lost their lives in this area and the russians continue hunting for those who are still there if we increase the number of this since the beginning of may we can see just complete and total superiority from the russian side every single square meter was attacked by the russians during may but without any attempt from the russian side to establish complete control over this territory now we are moving to Chesavyar. We have additional updates, but not so many. We have some progress on the ground. The Ukrainian sources published the video of FPV drone strikes on the Russian forces in this area, which confirms complete Russian control. Very slowly, step by step, meter by meter, the Russians are moving forward to the west. The Ukrainians show significant resistance, but uh, I can't tell you for sure about the real Russian tactics and what are the purposes. The only thing I see that uh, the Ukrainians still use the Western weapon with African and uh, Iranian Middle East camouflage that is well can be well discovered by the Russian satellites and after that destroyed as a result of artillery strike. So we see some lack of time from the Ukrainian side. They haven't managed to, uh, let's say, bring the weapon and equipment to normal situation, to normal camouflage, and the Russians are using the situation. So no changes in this area. The Russians continue clearing Kalinovka, clearing Chasavyar, but without any attempts to move further on the ground. Uh, the Russians are very active 
in the triangle, more precisely in the square, let's call it like this, between Seversky, Donetsk, Donbass Canal, Ivanovska and Klishevka. So this rich, rich network of the fortifications is the main Russian target. As you can see, the Russians FPV drone this area heavily with significant number of strikes. They're hunting the Ukrainian forces, their positions, reserves, MO depots, warehouses. The Russians are hunting on Ukrainian tanks on this video we can see another attempt for the Ukrainian side to counter attack the Russians to reach the line of combat contact and to attack the Russians within a distance but as a result of artillery strike probably the Ukrainian tank was damaged and later destroyed so the Russians are focused in this area while the Russians have some progress uh, haven't uh, don't have any progress in Chesavyar they try to clear and to finish the battle with along the Seversky Donetsk Donbass uh, canal now let's move to Avdiivka we have additional updates from this territory as well according to information we have for now without any geolocations confirming this the russians continue advancing inside of the village by the name of nova alexandrovka they managed to improve their positions they're moving further so the russians the most important that according to some sources without geolocations without 100 proofs uh, the russians managed to dig in deeper inside of nova alexandrovka and now the ukrainians don't have any chances to force the russians to fall back we can say that now it's just a matter of time when the russians establish complete control over the village of course it's not going to happen today not tomorrow but maybe in a week or in two this is going to happen most likely the most important updates are coming from Nitailova, from Karlovka Water Reserve. We can say that Nitailova flower is blooming, continue blooming or whatever. There we got a lot of geolocations confirming additional Russian progress. The Russians during the previous 24 hours improved their positions further to the southwest of Nitailova. This territory was captured uh, by the Russians as a result of clearing operations. The Ukrainians were forced to fall back further to the south in direction of, let's say, these probably farms and probably in direction of, uh, let's say, Nit Karlovka itself also the russians continue moving further to the west trying to force the ukrainians to fall back from this residential area on the ukrainian side of balka uh, domaha area so the russians are pushing and the ukrainians are suffering losses but yet showing some resistance furthermore we got the most important updates that the russians activated and started their offensive let's say in direction of this part of karlovka this one that located to the north of karlovka water reserve also the russians began moving further to the north from Nitailov in direction of Yasnobrodovka. Today we got the video that was published by the forces of by the uh, let's say uh, forces of Ukraine. On this video we can see uh, the Russian attempt to uh, clear the trenches to answer the fortifications. We see just one personnel carrier and significant number of infantry, uh, probably up to 20 machines, uh, let's say um, 20 soldiers landed in the area and started clearing operation and started moving further to the north. So the Russians are moving to Yasnobrodovka and the battle for the final town for the last town in this direction is the Brodovka has begun furthermore some sources reported that the russians managed to improve also their positions further to the west and to capture and to answer this uh, part these three lines and they continue improving their positions further to the north this is very dangerous situation for the ukrainians because if the russians are able to capture this territory of course the russians would not be able to continue moving further to the west because further to the west we can see very powerful and big ukrainian stronghold this one and basically from this stronghold the ukrainians will be able to stop any offensive from the russian side so most likely this attack is not going to take place but from these positions the russians will be able to establish complete fire control over the ukrainian positions in karlovka itself in this residential area the russians will be able to suppress the ukrainian forces and this will allow the russians to continue moving further to the west from nitailova to karlovka so the battle is going to be very difficult probably one of the most difficult but if the russians are able to bypass karlovka then the battle for selidova is going to start and kuraha as well so the russians are getting closer and closer to the final battle on donetsk direction now let's move further to the south we have very interesting report from Georgiev. if you remember during the previous probably 10 days i talk a lot about complete absence of any updates from Georgievka direction and today for the first time for the previous two weeks we got the first video from the village by the name of maximilianovka this is very interesting video because on this video we don't see very heavy clashes storm attempts or different other things on this video we can see just a regular russian fpv drone who was destroying the ukrainian communication equipment so most likely this is the beginning this is the beginning of something big because of course before any offensive operation the first thing you need to do is to destroy communication cameras radars equipment different electronic equipment electronic warfare equipment before attempts to attack without this your the chances that you would be defeated is around 100 percent so now we see that the russians are doing this first they started with destroying of equipment most likely 
after three four days because during the previous uh 12 14 days the russians were discovering all these equipment positions now the russians will destroy them and during this small gap of time until the ukrainians are able to restore all this equipment the russians will try to attack maximilianovka and most likely this attack is going to be very successful and the russians most likely would be able to answer the village itself now let's move further to the south. So we haven't received almost anything from uh, Konstantin for just a regular activity. Very interesting video. I will I, I'll repeat once again. Very interesting video we got from the line between Salotka and Vadiane. The video was published by the Russian forces. And uh, from first point of view, uh, we don't see anything special, anything interesting. Uh, nothing special, just the Russian light vehicles who are crossing the fields, moving along the roads and heading towards the Ukrainian positions even uh, for example on this part of the video we don't see any resistance from the ukrainian side no strikes nothing no fpv drone strikes no artillery strikes so you might say so what is important so important in this video and this is exactly the most important thing first of all take a look at this video and probably for the first time since the beginning of the special military operation we see that the russians are conducting offensive operation with the lightest type of vehicle ever that uh, uh, exist in the Russian army. This is the Tigers. Race or Tiger, the Russians have light vehicles. They're armored. Of course, they, arm, they have some armor. This is not something empty. These, they have armor, but this is light vehicles. Now, when the Russians enter the fields, the Ukrainians start bombing them, but I can't even understand what kind of weapon the Ukrainians were using to bomb the Russians. Probably something useless, as I understand. And you see no resistance from the Ukrainian side. You may say, so, and this uh, absence of any resistance can mean a lot. And we will discuss this in a moment. Once again, the Russians for this offensive were using the lightest vehicles ever probably the lighter are just the motorcycles and bikes but um, for example when the russians reached the line of combat contact we see that the russians were suppressing the ukrainian positions so that means that the way ukrainians their positions the trenches weren't empty the way ukrainians but the ukrainians show no resistance so what was that uh, light vehicles first of all few things maybe the ukrainians have problems with supply and support possibly yes possibly we discussed a lot that from the forces of 79th brigade that most of the uh, and the ammo uh, currently is transferring to Kharkiv direction, so they do have some problems with this. So maybe the Ukrainians on this direction didn't have any, let's say, uh, FPV drones or they were so far or they were too busy. So they decided to give up position and not even to show resistance that say to... And that's it. Uh, the second thing is that uh, probably the Russians found some solution how to, let's say, bypass the large territories without any resistance. And today, for example, this morning there was a video report that the Russians created a very, uh, let's say, m m small warf electronic warfare equipment. And for example, on this video, we can see that race or that Tiger light vehicle. We see this equipment was established on the, on the base of the car of this uh, armored vehicle and using these armored vehicles we saw attack so as i understand the russians were testing this type of weapon and most likely as you can see the ukrainians haven't made even a single attack on russian positions so maybe the russians demonstrated us and shown us um the use of this new electronic warfare equipment that can shield light vehicles completely and we see once again no resistance from the ukrainian side we will follow the situation we need more details and updates to make Make, let's say 100 conclusions but maybe the russians found the solution how to fight with the ukrainian drones now let's move further to staromayorsko rajayna as you can see no updates after significant progress during the previous few days now we see complete absence of anything so that means that a few things um, most likely the Russians finished the battle either for Staromayorska and about to finish the battle for, uh, let's say, strategical part of Urajaina. Now the Russians are about to finish the clearing operation, most likely during before the end of the week, before the Sunday, Russia will announce about complete control over the territory. Rabotina uh, Takmachka, no updates, just regular activity without any interesting changes on the ground or any interesting attacks, neither from the Russian nor from the Ukrainian side. Also, we have important statement that the Russians finished the building of the logistic roads to Crimea along the Azov Sea. From now on, the Russians are no longer need Crimean bridge. Now Crimean bridge is just a symbol, symbol of Russia that they still control the situation. And even if the Ukrainians are able to destroy Crimean bridge in many, many parts all over the entire length of the bridge, 
for now it's not a problem for Russia because they finish the building of the railway connection of Crimea with the mainland along through Militopol, Takmak, so along the southern part uh, of uh, Zaporozhye area. So this is of course very important achievement. Now the Russians know they are completely secured and uh, regarding the possible developments of the situation they know for sure that they will not lose supply and support of Crimea never.